Hi everyone, so we're on lesson three. Um, let's make sure this is working. Yeah, it seems to be picking me up. I think, a little closer to it. Seems to pick me up. Hopefully, we will be alright. So we're on lesson three now. And we're going to use the harmonics. Because it wants us to solve this equal to five. So this part here, I'm going to put in harmonic form. So remember, the idea of this is we've got two trig graphs together that you're trying to graph. We don't know what it looks like, so you combine it as a single trig graph. So my 7 cos x plus 3 sine x is going to be r. So it starts off with cos, so we do cos. And remember with the cos um, compound angle formula, it's the opposite sign with cos, so it's going to be minus alpha. So to find r, it's just Pythagoras. Which according to the pack gives us root 58, which it does, 1 to 9 plus 9. And then to find alpha, I always do second one over first one, but if that was a minus three, I'd ignore the sign, and then that gives me uh, alpha is 23.2. So my seven cos x plus three sine x is really root 58 cos of theta minus 23.2. So what that means is, is this original function that I wanted to solve, that becomes root 58 cos of theta minus 23.2 is equal to 5. So this bit here has been transformed into this in harmonic form. <clears throat> right now then, if I want to solve it, this is just like any of the solving stuff I've done in the past. If I divide through by the root 58, so I've got cos of theta minus 23.2 is 5 over root 58, and then do the inverse cos of it. Remember, all this is just on menu 1. So that would give us 49.0. Uh, and then what I'm going to do, I'd cheat then, and I would just graph. So at that point there, oops, let's press that button. I would graph y equals cos x minus 23.2. I'd graph y equals 5 over root 58. I'd set x, because it's going from 0 to 360, I'd set x going between 0 to 360, and y going between about minus 1.1 and 1.1, and then I'd just see where it crossed. And the final answer is, oh, I've done it again. I keep pressing the wrong button. I need to use the one on the screen, not the one in front of it, that I've used for 20 plus years, so it's very hard to change it. There. So my theta value, I'm going to get out is 72.2 or 334.2 on my graph. So I do my graph with this information and get out these answers there. There we go. That's not too bad, a bit of trig for us. Who doesn't like a bit of trig? But hopefully you lot don't mind a bit of trig because there's so much of it on course. Right, so then it says, <clears throat> state of transformations. So the transformations come from the harmonics again. So let's have a look at A. So what have we got? So I've got 2 sine x minus 7 cos x. 
So this transformation of bit here is implying that we want the harmonic form again. So it starts off with sine. And if you remember with sine, for sine, the, the sine says, stays the same. So that will be a minus alpha there. So to find R, R is just 2 squared plus 7 squared. So that's giving me a root 53. It's better as a, as a third. And then to find alpha, I do second number over first number, but if you look, I've ignored the minus. And I've mentioned that before about ignoring the minus. Uh, what I mean here, oh, look, so just be careful, this is radians. There. So it does say measure in radians there, doesn't it? So that's in radians, so it gives us 1.29. So my 2 sine x minus 7 cos x is actually root 53 uh, sine theta minus 1.29. So my transformation, let me finish this, is still doing the maths, isn't it? So my transformations are going to be a translation. Remember, I was doing inside the brackets first. 1.290. Stretch scale factor root 53 parallel to the y axis. Or in the y direction. So that's part A done. There, state the transformations. Part B says state the maximum. So the maximum, if you remember from the max and min stuff we talked about. The maximum what time are we on in is when that bit is either minus 1 or 1, or possibly 0 to be a bit sneaky. So you've just got to see what gives you the biggest number overall. So in this case, specifically, it gives us the biggest number, the max, when sine of theta minus 1.29 is equal to 1. So my max value is root 53 times 1, which is root 53. So I've got the maximum value, and now I want to know where it occurs. So where it occurs is where my sine theta minus 129 is equal to 1. So theta minus 129 is equal to, was it equal to, you can't find out there. It's equal to pi by 2. So then if I add on the, the 1.29, you get 2.86 radians. And that's where it is the maximum value. So that's part B done. Right. <laughs> let's have a look. Oh, I've done it again. Press the wrong button. So let's have a look now at part C. And I might need to start a new video for part C, which is unfortunate because I don't think there's much left of it. <clears throat> Right, so part C. It wants me to solve 2 sine 3t minus pi by 3 minus 7 cos 3t minus pi by 3. I'm not going to solve the room. And that's equal to 3. Now I have got that dissimilar form, haven't I? So I have already got the 2... Oh, at one point, I remember, I'll go to a different classroom now, and we'll have slightly different software where I don't use this bit. That I don't know if you can see the pen selector. Uh, right, so I know that 2 sine x minus 7 cos x is equal to root 53 sine theta minus 1.29. So my theta, now I've got my x really, is going to be this part here. Do it again. So what I've got is a two sine. So my my theta is three t minus two.